hear me? Um, okay, welcome to the Planning Committee. My name is uh, Councillor Steve Babs, I'm the Chair of the Planning Committee. And the first warning, uh, could we ask you all to have your mobiles either off or into silent, would be greatly received. Uh, can I also please advise you that we will be webcast this evening and a record will be retained on the Council website. Our cameras are set to follow the microphones to follow the proceedings, so if you are coming up on the floor, um, I don't know whether we, they don't have to be webcast if you don't want to. If you object to be a webcast, you, you can uh, make that request, okay? Um, I would also remind members to have the mic on when they're speaking, so people can hear us and the camera will follow you. My role is to ensure the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people are, um, on my right is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on procedural and legal matters, the minute takers and the webcaster over in the corner there. To my left are the council planning officers, highway engineer, environmental health officer and they will present uh, technical issues and the applications and provide uh, advice as required. The rest of the people down both sides of the table, if you like my airplane, um, are the elected members uh, and it's ultimately those people who will make the decisions and that will be done by a show of hands. Before each application is discussed there will be a short presentation from the planning officers in the event that there is a qualifying petition of 25 signatures or more from different addresses, one representative will be invited to address the committee in, in support of their petition. And they have up to five minutes. I will let them know when they come into a minute so we can round up. If the petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicants or agents will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again, for up to five minutes. And I will let them know when they have a minute left. However, if the petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicants or agents will not be invited to uh, representation to the committee. A ward councillor can address the committee on behalf of residents, but once they return to the public arena, they may not participate in the debate um, that, they, that follows within the committee. As I understand, if the ward councillor has no time limit, but we have asked them to bear in mind. The application will then be opened up to debate, discussion by members of the planning committee will then make a decision on the application. In order tonight's agenda may vary because we try and uh, vary it to the numbers of people who have turned up for events, uh, for, for items, um, I will alter that and that will be by the agreement of the committee so I'll let you know about that fairly shortly. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then this matter will not be discussed any further this evening and will be discussed at a future planning committee. Members of the public for that application will be asked if they wish they could leave. Uh, I'm not preempted whether we've got any side visits yet, but um, we'll come to that when we, we agree. So there the sort of setups as we go. So I'm going to go into the agenda. There's a little bit of stuff we have to do at the beginning before we get into the meeting. Of the, day. the first one is item one which are the minutes of the last planning committee. Can the committee agree that as a true record? Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sign them. I'm not going to get those. Right. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Are there any members' code of conduct? Under the code of conduct, are there any declarations of interest? We've well, got Councillor George Davis. I've got two, please, Steve. Um, item four. Um, on, on the full planning committee <coughs> list, uh, I've been involved in, uh, in discussions at cabinet level and I need to bring this to this position tonight. And number 13, uh, to, on the latest, which is uh, TPOs, my name's uh, next to them. Okay. Well, can you explain that that's a prejudicial interest and you believe the room or is it just a statement? Okay, uh, I will be declared an interest. Um, Members will know consistently on national calls uh, due to my position as a non-executive director on the board at Magenta. And I will also, for the same reason, be declaring an interest on item 12. And I would like some uh, people to confirm that. I also did not take any part in any of the briefings associated with these items. Uh, as is my role as chair, I didn't engage in this at all, just for the record. Okay, so that any more declarations of interest? No, okay. So, this would be the matter of the hotel. Oh, sorry, the request was there. Okay, are there any requests for site visits on any of the items on the agenda? Yeah. 
agenda tonight. Okay, so there's no side with it. So for those in the audience, if you hear from any of the items, they will eventually be discussed tonight. Can I, with uh, members' position, uh, permission, alter the order of business so to accommodate members of the public who are here? And the most numbers who are here for the first item would be item five, then item seven, and then item nine. So item five would be first, little Mondays. Item seven, which would be uh, eaten by, and item nine would be Ashby Court. So they're the first three, and then we'll be to the agenda as, as is. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the cooperation. So we do move on then to number five, and we'll have the presentation from you. Uh, this application was the subject of a member's site visit on Tuesday. Planning Commission is sought for the erection of a two-storey extension to the existing dwelling and the erection of a new dwelling with associated detached garage adjacent. The site sits within the primarily residential area, and as such, the principle of a new dwelling in this location is acceptable, subject to the criteria set out in policy HS4, New Housing Development. Considering the extension of the existing property first, this will involve extending from the rear elevation of the property by five or more metres and will follow the existing roof form and ridge line. The extension is considered to be proportionate in scale and design to the post dwelling and its plot would not impact on neighbouring properties and communities by way of any potential loss of outlook or impact on natural light. A good sized rear garden is retained and the proposed extension will not impact the loss of the road. The, ex the extension uh, proposed. Sorry to interrupt. Is sorry, the sound, sir, it's is not, the sound it's not reproduction working, please. It's very difficult to hear. Okay, can you? Okay, I'll, I'll set that interjection. Can you? I'll ask Matthew to hold the mic closer to his mouth. Okay, is that okay? Sorry about that. The extension proposed to the existing dwelling is considered to be in keeping with policy HS11 house extensions and supplementary planning guidance notes 11 for house extensions. In addition to the extensions proposed to the existing dwelling, this application seeks permission for the subdivision of the plot and the erection of a new two-storey four-bedroom detached dwelling. A detached single garage is also proposed within the curtilage of the site. Each of the dwellings in Far Hall Drive are individual in design and appearance and sit within their own plots. The proposed new dwelling is relatively simple in design with a hipped roof. New vehicle access for the new property will be created giving access via Far Hall Drive, which is a private road. Plot sizes differ along Far Hall Drive, and while steps of plots are relatively similar along this side of the road, plot widths do differ, ranging from 44 metres wide to 17 metres wide. At present, the plot width of 43 Far Hall Drive is around 44 metres wide. The plot, width, the plot width for number 43 would reduce to 22 metres, the same width of the plot for the new dwelling. This is similar to the plot width of number 45 Far Hall Drive, immediately adjacent to the application site to the east. It is not considered that this reduction in plot width will have any detrimental impact on the wider street. A street scene considering the different pot depths along the far drive. Interface distances in terms of the relationship of the new dwelling and neighbouring properties are all achieved, ensuring the new dwelling would not impact on the amenities of, adjo of adjoining properties. In terms of the relationship between the new dwelling and the existing post dwelling, there will be an impact on windows along the west facing elevation of the existing dwelling. On the ground floor, some French doors will be within four metres of the gable end of the new dwelling. The existing glass conservatory, conservatory structure is to be removed as part of these proposals. However, a secondary window at the front of the existing property ensures that outlook and natural light in this room would not be so affected as to impact ne negatively on the enjoyment of this room. Similarly, the side windows to the kitchen area are smaller secondary windows with larger bifolding doors towards the rear of the side elevation and another set of bifolding doors on the rear elevation. On the first floor, there is a bedroom in the middle of the property with a dormer window that will look out towards the new dwelling. However, given the sloping roof of the new dwelling and the difference in land levels between the new dwelling and the existing dwelling, this window will not look directly onto a blank wall 
and good natural light and outlook for this bedroom would be retained. It is considered that the proposals are acceptable having regards to local and national planning policies and the application is recommended for approval. There is a qualifying petition of rejection. Okay, um, that's the officer's presentation. We do have a qualifying petition. Does uh, someone form the petitioners wish to address the committee? No, Chairman. Okay, so if nobody wishes to address it. In that case, then I, uh, the applicant will not be able to reply. Uh, the next person on the call is the ward councillor. Is there a ward councillor who wishes to speak? Yes, sir. Okay, let's if you just introduce for the record your name and you have as long as you like. Um, my name is Councillor Ezra Owens, I'm the Councillor for the Hesco Ward. Um, Mr Chairman and fellow Councillors, thanks very much for allowing me to address the committee. You'll be aware that the strength of the local opposition to this application is over 100. Concerned residents signed a petition opposing it. Many of them are here tonight. You've each received a letter individually on this application. This is another indication of how strongly local residents feel. The principal objections are that the application completely conflicts with the Council's planning policy and with the planning history of the site. The application represents a cramped overdevelopment on an inappropriate site. The proposed new house would be the third in the original plot of 43, harmful to the character and appearance of the area, and thereby, we feel, contrary to the policy HS4 of the adopted rural unitary development. The proposed extension to the existing house at 43 would result in a material loss of privacy for neighbours and the proposed new house the same. The application conflicts with our current planning guidance known as Appendix 1 on distance, height and significance overlooking. As an example, the proposed extension to 43 Farwell Drive would look directly into the family living room and main bedroom of 45 Farwell Drive. The proposal is in direct conflict with Appendix 1 rules issued by Middlebury Council. The ecological report is deficient and does not address the fact that all the trees on the plot are covered by TPOs. Issued by the Middlebury Council, the development requires all trees to be felled in a direct conflict with the TPOs. And I notice that, that there is no TPO plan that's, that's, that's come with this planning application. Far Hall Drive is an undocumented right away and its infrastructure includes its drainage systems, cannot support more housing developments, and there is no housing need for this sort of house in the borough. Mr Chairman, when this application came before the committee in December, you moved that the consideration of this application be deferred to allow officers to confirm planning history for the site and to consult directly with Welsh Water the relevant planning history. On the first issue of planning history of the site, the committee paper says that there was no record of previous applications or appeals within the council. This is not the case. The previous planning file is available in the real archives and residents have sent a copy to each committee member and the documents have been handed, delivered and emailed to the planning department. It is quite evident from, for, from the refusal documentation that has been supplied what the nature of the application was. The committee papers argue that because previous history <coughs> predates current legislation and policy, e.g. the Town Hall and the Country Planning Act 1990, the adoption of the World Unitary Development Plan in 2000 and the National Planning Policy Framework revised in 2018, little weight should be given to the previous applications. We argue that the previous 1974 case is completely relevant despite the passage of time. The same planning considerations apply now as they did then. Uh, the early application for, the, for a new house, smaller than the current application, it was actually a bungalow. This is a four bedroom house that's been applied for now. On the same southwesterly plot in the garden of 43 Farm or Ride, the local planning authority refused permission as the proposed dwelling would, in the opinion of the local planning authority, give rise to a neighborliness and loss of privacy to the adjoining dwellings. The planning inspector in 1974 dismissed the subsequent appeal, stating, my main concern is with the sighting of the new dwelling and be a smaller 
well, in, in relation to the little wonders that is proposed now. A material and mutual loss of privacy by overlooking could not be avoided. These planning considerations are entirely relevant and valid now as they were then. Mr Chairman, I would like, also like to draw the committee's attention to more recent relevant planning history. The committee's refusal in July 2018 of a similar infill plot applicated for 19 Far Hall Drive close to this application site, this committee stated the proposed dwelling would represent an unacceptable subdivision of the existing plot, resulting in a cramped overdevelopment of the site, harmful to the character and appearance of the area, thereby contributing to HS4, the adopted budget, the Energy development plan. Whilst I know I can't talk about another plan applications, I am trying to demonstrate the relevance of this committee's decision with one house and within less than 100 yards of the road, the same house, same conditions apply. The current application of 40 d would do exactly the same. The planning inspector has confirmed the correctness of the planning committee's decision on 19. He dismissed the subsequent appeal, stating proposals to, do not need to have regard uh, do need to have regard to existing densities and the form of development, so that they do not detrimentally change the character of the area. I consider that the proposals would result in a cramped form of development that would not reflect the spacious context that informed the character of the area. I have concluded that the proposal would be contrary to say UDP policy HS4, as significant harm would be caused to the character and the penis of the area and thus <coughs> the environment. The point about densities and form of development also chimes with the planning inspector in 1974, who notes about 43. <coughs> the appeal site is related to the low density development front, fronting onto Far Hall Drive. These properties are predominantly large houses standing in substantial grounds. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, we have council refusals for applications in 1973, 43, and 2019 on grounds of inappropriate or cramped overdevelopment on infill sites. Both refusals are supported by planning inspectors. We have the respected opinion of two planning inspectors, one in 1974 and one in 2019, confirming exactly the same point about the need to maintain the character and density of existing housing when considering the proposed housing development. Proposals do need to have regards to existing densities and the form of development so that they do not detrimentally change the character of the area. The pro these proposals would result in a cramped form of development that would not reflect the spacious context that informs the character of the area. It would result in significant harm to the character and appearance of, it, of the area. As such, the proposals would be contrary to sustained UDP policy HS4, as the scheme would not be of a scale which relates well to surrounding property. <coughs> In particular, with regards to existing densities and form of development, the proposals would result in a detrimental change in the character of the area. This committee reaches the very same conclusion uh, as the inspector when considered in 19. In light of all the above evidence, we respectfully ask the committee to do the same here and refuse this application. The chairman has also asked for uh, Will Waters to, uh, um, Welsh Water to be consulted on this application. The committee paper covers their response. You may like to know that a group of residents have challenged the uh, Welsh Water approach and an action that will be taken against them if they do not comply with the statutory obligations and rectify the sewer faults in Far Hall Drive. As the planning department are aware, solicitors have been instructed to examine the bridal way rights and have responded as follows and are examining further. The, res the residents are seeking urgent legal advice as no legal basis has been established by the developer on his agents for the legal access to Far Hall Drive in light of its status as a bridal way, which is accepted by Wilbur Council. There is no access to Far Hall Drive other than within the consent of all the residents. Therefore, even if planning permission is granted tonight, it does not give the developer the legal rights of access to the bridal way. Thank you very much, Chair.
Okay, thank you. Right, um, quite a number of points there. Um, going back to the previous meeting before the, the site visit, uh, I'd like just some confirmation about the reaction. Welsh Water have no objections, is, is, is what I believe, that you can confirm that. Right of way issues and access, I think you've probably got to be a civil matter, which is not technically a planning issue, but obviously members have heard that. The, the premise is that this completely conflicts with our planning policy. I'd like some reaction from officers and I can't believe officers would go, go through the whole application that completely conflicts with our um, planning um, guidelines. And the other one is about the status of the TPO and trees on the site. So they're, they're the first things I would like you to address on behalf of the committee before we open it up to the base. that fair? Yeah. Thank you, through you, Chair. <coughs> Clearly the relevant policies are contained within the Rural Unitary Development Plan, which was adopted by the Council in 2000, and the National Planning Policy Framework uh, which was first um, introduced, um, well, well, there's been a recent re revision uh, in 2018 and again um, earlier this year. So um, we have to have regard to those policies. I mean, in regard to the planning history of the site, which the council has alluded to back in 1974, um, yeah, that predated the 1990 Act. It predated the UDP, uh, as I said, was adopted in 2000 and the National Planning Policy Framework and a raft of supplementary planning documents and guidance which the Council has agreed. So, um, whilst it, it is a material consideration, the weight to be given to, to that refusal has to be very limited given the substantial changes in, in planning policy since, since the, um, the application was refused over 40 years ago. The, uh, the status of the TPO is that it has only recently been uh, put in place as a, a, a temporary measure and it, it, it covers the whole of Farwell Drive, so all of the properties that sit within, um, within Farwell Drive. And over the intervening time between now and the next six months, the tree officer will look at the, um, the, the trees that are covered in that border um, and will confirm which of those trees are, um, are, are to be confirmed in the order. Because as it, as it stands, there is a TPO that covers the whole of, of Farwell Drive. So that's the status of the, of the TPO. And the bridal way, as, as you say, Chair, is, is not relevant to the planning application. It's a private matter um, for those people who, um, who own the road. And um, oh, United Utilities, yeah, I can confirm that they've raised no objections to the application. Okay, so I'll open it up to members for questions, contributions. Um, Kathy? I'm sure you accept as a Lord Councillor. Uh, oh, yeah. Could you put the council on the screen, please, as Lord Councillor? I think members generally want to see the position within the plot side. It would be quite <coughs> Yes, yeah. Do you want to make any other contribution well, while the officers are speaking? Does any other member want to make a contribution while the officers are speaking? Chair, just a quick comment, really. The, the, um, arrangement with the uh, tree preservation orders is a blanket for Parkour Drive, as you've confirmed. How relevant is that, considering it was probably arranged uh, just after this application was submitted? Is that right or not? In other words, can it be taken into account in this particular application? Because it seems very general, and as you've said, it would probably have to be subject to confirmation in detail uh, if the application was to be approved. Can you just comment on that first? Thank you through you, Chair. The, the, um, the order has only been placed in the last couple of weeks, so yes, it's, it's, um, the, the application itself predates the, the TPO by, by some considerable time. Having said that, it is a material consideration for the determination of this application. I think we, you know, 
those going on site, I think those who uh, have, were there, I think the material consideration is about the lot size, the uh, <coughs> general character of the area, and those type of issues. And I think this is what the, we're trying to hone in on, really, uh, if that's a fair comment. So. Yeah, that's okay. I'll make some comments if I'll have some Okay. Um, basically, what I want to, uh, what I'd like to say is that, um, as um, Councillor Rowland has already alluded to, this is a property, or it's a site of a plot, that has already once been subdivided, and now you're looking at subdividing it again to the third property on it, and then have a double story extension to the second property. So, um, in my view, it's an overdevelopment of the site. You're now looking at a site that had one property on that is now having three properties and a substantial extension to the second. Um, I feel that it would be out of character and an overdevelopment of the site. I do have words for refusal, but I'm minded to let the rest of the committee um, have a say and draw the conclusions if they so wish. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, if you were going to be asked to vote on something, it would be probably better yeah, we, we know what the reasons that we refuse a lot. Okay, I think we wait until... We wait until... Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone else got any contributions to make? Uh, okay. Right. right. Well, I'll, I'll make some contribution because... I think... You, you I, have I, think I think if you look at the sign plan, you can see where, uh, in red, you've got the two dwellings. The existing one, which is going to be uh, increased in size. The new property at, uh, to the left. And then the um, the other side, 45, which was the original subdivision. So you can see in the plot where there are three properties where there was one in the middle. Um, in terms of far more drive, we do have to look at this in the context of the road. Because sometimes if you're looking at a road which has houses, you would think that that's perfectly all right. But we're looking at it in the context of far more drive and keeping the street scene looking as it was. In my view, those three properties all together are an overdevelopment of that particular site. Yeah. Okay. okay, I mean, it is um, uh, an interesting development, an interesting site, and we were gratefully received when we, we arrived on site. <coughs> I think on site, um, you know, people tend to um, perhaps over exaggerate the impact of what may be coming. Uh, clearly, there is room on that site for a, a sizable development. There are simpler lot sizes in the vicinity. Uh, but I take on board your, 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 your valid argument. Um, I think, in my view, I've looked hard and whether I would personally, and uh, this is my personal view, be able to go and defend an appeal in, 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 in public or, or um, in person. And I've not been able to put the reasons for refusal. So for, for the sake of clarity, I would also be moving approval. Um, but you, your refusal will come to this. That's okay. Yeah, David. Yes, thank you, Chair. My first impression on visiting the site that we went to the other day was that it was over development on the grounds that the house that's already there seemed to be located incredibly close to the house that's being proposed. And if you imagine where the sun comes from during the day, it moves from the east through the south and to the west. And I could see this having an impact on the immediate value, not just the house itself, but the garden, but the cloth that's there. And that was my fir first reaction to me in the construction engine, I thought I did that was the first thing that struck me, that it looked ostensibly as though it was an overview the site, almost supporting the points that um, Cathy has made in terms of uh, views of what far more drive looks like. So I wasn't happy about it, but I, like you, I have difficulty in coming in possibly to concrete uh, reason on the spot for thinking about refusing it. But I'd be interested to hear what uh, Cathy is, is proposing. But that was my concern, but out of character with the area. Uh, I don't think we should be normally supporting uh, projects which are out of character with the area, whatever the area may be. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Sam? Having regards to the host line that's there at the minute and the proposed new dwelling, 
there are some shortfalls um, in terms of the relationship with existing windows along the uh, along this uh, this elevation, the west elevation. However, there are mitigating factors, as I said in my presentation, in terms of there are other windows on the front elevation and the rear elevation that also allow uh, light into those rooms. So. Um, on balance, we, we've accepted that there still would be a good outlook and natural light into those rooms. Hey, just to come back, thank, thank you for that, um, Matthew. So, um, I, I hear the conversation happening, maybe it's my perspective, and I wasn't able to attend the site visit, but given, given an awful lot of places that we're looking at, I'm probably going to do struggle to see how this is in um, the criteria that the neighbours under the skating factors within Triangle would allow, I, I struggle to see. We are looking at, you, you, you must look at this as an individual road, and we're looking at street view. Now, if you are trying to compare this with a property anywhere else, then the, um, the objectives that you are going to apply will not be exactly the same. There are some shortfalls on some of the distances, and shortfalls on distances in properties that generally do not street view have mature trees and quite a lot of space between houses is completely different from if you're buying a property that is already a terraced property. So you have to look at this in the context of the road and the street scene. I think we accept that, yeah, Councillor Hobson. Um, however, we were, in the contribution made by the board council, they made a direct comparison with other sites. Well, this is, <laughs> as you say, an application in its own minutes. Yes. And I think, that, you know, I think it's a, it is a judgment, one of those that, that tests the judgments of elected members and officers, and uh, you know, I'd be very interested to see how, how the vote goes, and uh, we'd be very interested to hear your views for refusal. It would be very nice. Can I read them now? Yes. Okay. For you, Chairman. Um, I've got three reasons. First of all, I'd like to refuse item 5 APP stroke 18 stroke 0 1 2 3 4 and 43 Barthol Drive heads all on the following grounds. The proposed development would result in cramped form of development that would not reflect the spacious context that involves the character of the area. In particular, the subdivision of the plot and the scale of the new dwelling proposed would not be of a scale which relates well to surrounding property. In particular, with regard to existing densities and formal development along Farhall Drive. Therefore, it is considered the proposal would result in a detrimental change in the character of the area. As such, the proposal will be contrary to proxy HS4, New Housing Development of the World Inventory Development Plan. I'd also like to uh, refuse uh, the development of the, that the next property would be visually overbearing and dominant and an overdevelopment contrary to policy SPD 25.8. And it's clear that the proposed dwelling and its related garage will of necessity involve the felling of a significant number of established trees, which will have a significant impact on the established garage of the area as a whole and will be in conflict with policy GR5. Okay. Is that acceptable, Matthew? <coughs> Second part related to the spots. Yes, oh yes. GL5. The trees. You can do the trees, but, but not the So if we go on HS4 and GL5. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but I'd like to. Uh, to reiterate it then. Well, I'd like, I'd like to see what the actual reason for refusal is now. I mean, obviously. Right, the reason for refusal is GL5 on the trees. And HSR for overdevelopment of the site and out of character of the area. So the first, the first reason that you went out, that, yeah. that, that, that covers the over the overdevelopment of the HS4. site. HS4. Are you asking for a second reason in terms um, of the trees? If you feel that HS4 is sufficient, then I would go just with HS4. Yeah. Okay. Right. You now convinced me that I will be voting for approval because that, I mean, was clearly um, flaws in the original. Um, reason for refusal, and that sort of led me to try and go for approval. But I'll listen to if we go to the refusal. We've got a seconder. We've got a seconder for that. David, seconded. Okay, so it, as I say, and, and for members of the public, there is no whip on plan, and it's not a political issue, it's a judgment call for, for members to make uh, based on what they say. So, um, 
Can't go for. I'm going to go for a vote now. Yeah. That's okay. I'm not allowed to comment now. Not now, the vote's been called. No. Okay, I'm going to ask those on the committee who are in favour of refusal to raise their hands. Can they raise their hands? And those against? Thank you. 